Malware is using a new technique to determine where you're located. Hey, Jim. So what's the story you have for us today? Well, uh, back the week before Christmas, uh, my friend Xavier Mertens did a Internet Storm Center Handler's Diary about a malware sample that he found. He was just looking through the malware samples that had hit his spam trap and and found one that was using a technique that he hadn't seen before and I hadn't seen before. So I thought it was worth um, worth bringing to people's attention. So a lot of malware will attempt to determine you know, it's to, to geolocate itself, to attempt to determine where the victim is located. You know, either, you know, they don't want to infect their friends or they're only targeting, you know, users in a, you know, particular country or a particular region. And, you know, that's that's been in use by malware for a number of years. Uh, and often they'll do checks against some of these publicly available data sources via their APIs, you know, or they'll use the MaxMind you know, database or whatever. That's one of the most popular ones. This particular malware sample, though, didn't just do a reverse or you know a GeoIP lookup and try to you know get its location based on the IP address. This one actually was a little different. This one looked at the BSS ID of the Wi-Fi network. So the BSS ID is simply the MAC address of your access point, essentially. When we get on Wi-Fi, you, know, you expect to see the SSID and the, the name of the Wi-Fi network you know, my home network is FBI surveillance van you know, to try to keep people off it. But uh, underneath that, what really gets broadcast out over the air is essentially the MAC address of the access point. Well, there are folks who, via war driving or whatever, have collected the locations, the latitude and longitude locations of these BSS IDs, these MAC addresses of access points. And this particular malware sample is checking the BSS ID, the, the wireless network that it's on, and doing a reverse lookup on that BSS ID with uh, a particular researcher has set up an API where you, you know, do a simple HTTPS request pass it the BSS ID and it returns, you know, the latitude and longitude. It, it was a fascinating new technique to me because I hadn't seen actually trying to do lookups based on the, the BSS ID. But it's, you know, another tool that the attackers are using now to determine location so that they can to so that they can determine whether or not to infect this particular individual or not. As I said, a new technique that I hadn't seen before. I don't know if any of the rest of you have seen anything like that, but um, I hadn't found any uh, in the literature, you know, on the internet, I hadn't seen anybody else who had seen this particular technique before. So it's one to be on the lookout for. Another tool that the bad guys are using to, you know, as part of their attack toolkit to determine whether or not to infect a particular host. Yeah, that brings up a lot of interesting points for like um, uh, virtual machines and sandboxes that people use for malware analysis because they might not be connected to a Wi-Fi device. They want to have a BSS ID, so it probably gives adversaries like a way to filter those out. 
So you're right. It really is another uh, uh, tool in their toolkit. Um, uh, there's a lot of very interesting implications. Uh, you can, I guess you can try to even fake some of these, but then, again, that could be another re way to filter them out. Um, so very, very interesting. Yeah, and this this particular one was a was a .NET application, so you know just taking advantage of all, all of the basic Windows APIs that make it easy to look up if it's connected to a wireless network. You know what is the BSS ID of the of the network that it's currently on. Um, you know those are all just standard Windows API calls which is easy to do in this, in a .NET application. You know, the story kind of reminds me of other tactics that bad guys use in malware to evade uh, being present on a specific asset. And I think this year, for some reason, the malware I was looking at this year had a higher rate of little tricks like that. Like it had to be a specific language from a specific country, or it had to be a specific time, and only then the malware would execute. And it seems to be present in a lot of these uh, kinds of, uh, you know, high profile malware families that you hear about, um, which is interesting. Um, yeah, I didn't think about it until until you just meant, brought this up, John. So, uh, yeah, really interesting again. Another thing to, to, to be on the lookout for. One thing that occurs to me is that an attacker could potentially use this technique to determine whether or not a host was attached to an enterprise network versus their home network. And with an increased uh, mobile and remote worker population that when they aren't attached to their VPN of choice for that organization have fewer security controls around their home network. It would be interesting uh, to see if there's any cases coming up where it can be documented that this type of corroboration to determine, yes, you're not only in this country, but I know that you're not behind enterprise grade protections because you're attached to a device that's reporting as a user grade, um, you know, ID, you know, assigned to, you know, a vendor in that realm. Um, if that can be used then to, again, have those non-direct attacks um, brought to bear against that target to infect that endpoint, which then might later carry into the enterprise, either yeah. across a VPN tunnel or physically. Exactly. The one way this could be used is, you know, only phone home when you're not on the VPN, but, but actually launch the attack against the enterprise when you're attached to the corporate network or something like that. It's, yeah, the, the possibilities, a lot of different possibilities. <laughs>